Hey everyone, I don't know about you, but I wanna get on this new craze of AI text to image generators, but I don't wanna pay for a subscription to Mid Journey or have to share a Discord server with a whole bunch of people to uh, and wait for the resources to free up for the, um, for the servers to do the job that I want it to do rather than everybody else's job. Well, you're in luck because the Stable Diffusion AI text to image generator is free and open source and you can run it locally on your computer so long as you have uh, a powerful enough GPU with enough VRAM. Um, so a little bit of a disclaimer here, if uh, you have a lower end GPU, maybe not as much memory, you may not be able to run this. Um, you can follow along if you want and then when you get to the point where we're starting to uh, generate images, you get a memory error where it's saying it's trying to allocate memory, but it's out of memory, uh, then unfortunately, you will not be able to uh, run this locally. But if you have a powerful enough GPU, and in my case, I have a uh, NVIDIA RTX 3080, the 10 gigabyte model. So that is the lower end of the 3080s. There's the 10 gigabyte and 12 gigabyte. Um, then yeah, feel free to, feel free to um, jump in and follow along here. Um, so. First thing we're gonna do, uh, actually, first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to let you know, uh, one, disclaimer, I know very, very little about Python. Uh, so I normally work in C, C++, C Sharp. So um, I don't know too much about what's going on here, but um, there is this, uh, this is the guide that I originally followed uh, on assembly AI. Uh, how to run images locally. Uh, but in this tutorial, they say in order to follow along, you need to run it on a Linux-based system through a virtual machine or a Windows subsystem for Linux. Um, we will be installing this directly, or installing the dependencies directly in Windows and running it directly in Windows. So there's no need to figure out how to set up a virtual machine, figure out how to run Windows subsystem for Linux, which can be a bit of a pain. So um, especially in, in Windows 11, it's a bit weird. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyways, let's get started here. I'll leave a link to this in the description. The first thing we're going to do is going to go to stable diffusion, just go to the GitHub page. So it should be comp viz stable diffusion. I'll leave the link in the description here. I'm just going to go ahead and download that repository. If you know how to use Git, you can clone it through Git if you want. Uh, so that's all downloaded. Let's, uh, go ahead and extract that. And then we're going to move this uh, somewhere where we uh, want to work with it from. So um, in typical uh, computer programmer repository fashion, it's a good idea to um, have a short directory. So in this case, I'll go to my C drive here. I'm going to create a new folder, uh, call it repos for repositories. And then we'll go and drag this in there and uh, I'm just going to rename it to SD for stable diffusion, just to make it really quick to get to, because we will need to type this into the command prompt later. Uh, so that's done. I'm going to delete that. Next thing is we need the environment to run this in. So this is all the code and stuff, but we need something to run the Python code. So we will go to Miniconda here, which is just a lightweight version of Anaconda. And we're just gonna go ahead and download the Windows version to the desktop. And then this should install like any other um, yeah, this should install like any other installer. It'll install all the environment variables and stuff for you as well. So you don't need to worry about that. So now that that's done, I don't want to look at that. Um, we need to go download one more thing and that is the, uh, model. So I'm going to copy, I'll leave this in the description. It's just basically a link to this googleapis.com storage. And then we're going to be downloading this, uh, stable diffusion version 1.4 checkpoint. So hit enter on that. It's going to come up the download here. We're going to hit save. 
on that. This is a pretty big file, so it might take a little while to download. Um, also, Google servers, for some reason, their API server is not that fast. So this will take about two minutes uh, for me in my internet connection. Uh, but basically what this is, is this is the all the training that's been done uh, on the stable diffusion model. So all the billions of images that they've collected to train this AI text to image generator on has resulted in this file. So you don't need to uh, basically train it yourself. Um, so I will uh, come back here when that's finished downloading. All right, now that that has finished downloading, I'm actually gonna get rid of the Miniconda installer and then we're just gonna drag this stable diffusion 1.4 checkpoint file into our stable diffusion root directory. So that's the first after the folder that we dragged in here. Um, all right, now it's time to actually start doing some stuff in a command prompt. So uh, go to your start menu and type in, uh, start typing in Miniconda and you'll see Anaconda PowerShell prompt Miniconda 3. We're gonna use that. So you're gonna you need to use this instead of the, uh, the normal command prompt or PowerShell because uh, it requires, it's got some extra stuff in it um, and this won't run properly in the normal one. So you need to run it in this one. Uh, but anyways, uh, first thing we need to do is type in CD for current directory and we need to go to where we stored our um, our stable diffusion stuff. So in that case, it's C colon slash repose slash SD. That's why I shortened it. Uh, so now your, uh, your path should have changed from your user path to the stable diffusion path. Next, we're gonna need to create the environment using this uh, environment WAML file. So um, that is conda and create. I'll leave this in the description as well. Uh, dash F flag environment dot WAML. And now this will take quite a while. Um, yeah, it takes uh, it downloads quite a few things, including Python, including PyTorch. PyTorch in particular takes a long time. Um, but yeah, I will uh, resume the video once this is all downloaded. All right, this is done now. Do keep in mind this will take a little while. Uh, there are kind of two points where it kind of hangs up. One is when it's installing PyTorch or downloading PyTorch. One when it's uh, it says installing PIP something. I don't even know where that is. Where is it? It's up here somewhere. Uh, da, da, da. Installing PIP dependencies. It'll take a while there as well. So don't uh, worry. It's just doing its thing. And it'll be done when you see the, the your um, directory again. Now that that's done, we can type in conda activate. You can see here it says activate this environment, use conda activate LDM. Well, you do that and you'll see the base will change to LDM. And then now we are finally ready to start uh, generating some images. So I have a little template here, which I will leave in the description. And that is this. So we're using Python to run script scripts slash text to image py so if i go to my directory here you'll see there's a scripts folder and then a text uh text to image py so that is what we're running um and then there's just a flag here that we need to include and then this is going to be the model so if by the time you're watching this a new version of stable diffusion comes out say 1.5 or 1.6 i don't know you'll change uh, this file here so you'll probably download sd-v1-5 or something so that's where you change the model. Uh, then I've got this skip grid flag in here. This is just basically going to skip. Um, Stable Diffusion will, uh, after it's done, kind of combine them into a collage where it has all of the images in a grid. Um, so by putting in this flag, it will just skip that part. Number of samples is just to do with uh, resolution. One is fine. If you turn it up, it, it requires more VRAM. Uh, NITR. This is uh, 
basically the number of images or iterations in this case, the number of images is gonna create. So we're gonna create four images. And then the prompt. Um, so this is where you put in whatever you want the image generator to create. Uh, one more flag that you might wanna be aware of is dash dash seed. By default, the seed is 42. And if you put in the same prompt with the same seed, you will get the same image again. So say you aren't happy with the four images you got from this one, you can uh, change it to 99 or whatever you want. Um, I don't think there's a limit, but uh, there's infinite possibilities. Uh, and then you can just get a different set of images. So that's up to you if you want to include that one. Uh, but we will go here to our uh, prompt and change it to, let's say, painting of cyberpunk street uh, foggy. And then we will press enter to do that, except I need to pause my video because OBS will crash if it's trying to record while um, while this is doing its thing. So I will stop my recording and then I'll show you the result. And this is done now. Um, for the first time, when you run this for the first time, it will uh, download some stuff. Um, this isn't my first time running it, so um, I didn't have to go through that, but uh, what you'll see these bars here, they'll go through, these are the different images. So depending on how many iterations you put in your uh, command uh, is the number of these you'll see. And then uh, when it's done, it will say enjoy, and then the uh, and then directory with the cursor ready for the next, um, ready, ready for your next prompt. If at this point <laughs> you got an error saying that it tried to allocate memory and it couldn't find anymore, that means unfortunately your GPU is not powerful enough for the, uh, the task of AI art generating. And, uh, but if you see the enjoy, that means your, um, your images are ready. So we go back to our stable diffusion directory. There's a folder called outputs. And you just keep going in until you see your images. And these are the images we created here of our cyberpunk street painting. And it does look kind of foggy in this painting. I quite like this one with this cool looking sign, or it could be the sun, or I don't know, it's up to interpretation. Um, but yeah, there we go. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you close out of this, so we all set it up and whatever, but if you close out of this, if you want to get back to generating more art on a different day or whatever, you can just type in miniconda for that anaconda, miniconda three uh, PowerShell window. And then again, we need to go to the directory. So uh, C colon slash repos slash SD. Oops, oh, I forgot the S in repos. There we go, and then we need to activate the environment. LDM, and then if you press up a couple times, it will get to your previous, um, your previous, uh, your previous prompt command. So I can now maybe say I don't know, uh, CG render of a cyberpunk street foggy. And I can run that. Uh, I'm not going to because it will crash my OBS. But anyways, that is how you set up Stable Diffusion and run it on your own computer. I hope you find this useful. If you have any other issues other than the ones that I, uh, that I stated, um, maybe look through. The best I can do is look through this um, tutorial very, very carefully. Um, otherwise, I know nothing about Python, so I probably can't help you. Um, but yeah, go have fun, generate as many images as you want. Uh, one disclaimer I will say is that if, um, the way that it's set up, if you type in something and it generates something that is not safe for work, it will give you an image of Rick Astley instead of the, uh, the image that you were hoping for. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's my only disclaimer for that. Um, but yeah, have fun. And I hope to see you guys in a later video.